Welcome to the high score tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to show how to add high score tables to your own games. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to subscribe to the Rock Coder YouTube channel where I regularly release tutorials, hints and tips videos, as well as demos of projects that I've made. So let's get started with this. The first thing we'll do is we'll hit create to create a new project. And what we'll need to write a high score table is scores. And what we need to make the scores is a game. So let's quickly put a game together. When the green flag is pressed, we're going to loop forever. And in that loop, I'm going to make a couple of custom blocks. The first one will be wait to play. All wait to play will do is wait for the space bar to be pressed and the second custom block is going to be play game and all play game will be will be the game obviously so forever wait to play and play game so why am i putting that in custom blocks i could put all the code in this loop itself but code is much better if you can actually read what's happening and it's very clear just looking at the green flag block that we're going to loop and in that loop we're going to wait to begin the game and then we're going to play the game we're going to do that again and again so let's pad this out a little bit wait to play we're going to wait for the space bar to be pressed so let's go into costumes let's delete costume two and for costume one i'm going to select all of the scratch cat i'm going to press the delete button to get rid of him because we don't need him what we need is some text that says in the serif font, because I like the serif font, press space bar to play. And that's it. I'm going to hit the equals key so I can see how large it will be on the screen. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. Yeah, about that looks good. And I'm going to make sure that's centered. So there we go, nice and centered on the screen. And I'm going to change the colour to black so it stands out nicely. So now we've got a sprite that says press spacebar to play. I'm going to change the costume name to spacebar. Again, it, it makes code easy to read. When I choose a costume, I can choose spacebar rather than costume one. And on the same subject, at the moment it's called sprite one, but this is the game, so I'm going to call it game. And let's have a look at the code. So Wait to play, play game, wait to play. Well, the first thing I do when I start the project, I want to make sure this sprite is hidden so you don't see press space bar to play until I want it to be seen. When I go into wait to play, I want to set the position. So I'm going to have this displayed in the bottom half of the screen, so minus 100. I'm going to show the sprite. And I'm going to wait for the space bar to be pressed. So let's wait until sensing block, key space pressed, and then I'll hide it again. Simple as that. So show you the sprite saying press space bar to play, wait until you pressed it and hide the sprite. And now we need to add the game. It's not going to be a very complex game. What we're going to have is a sensing block, ask. what's your score and we're going to want to store the answer somewhere so i'm going to set up a variable and i'm going to make it for all sprites and i'm going to call it score with a capital s because it's for all sprites i think it's always a good idea if if your variable is for all sprites to start it with a capital letter and if it's for this sprite only to start it with a small letter then it makes it obvious which which variables are which so ask what's your score and then set score to answer. So whatever you answered, that was your score. It's a great game. Let's let's show that variable for now. So I'll run the game, press space to play, press space. What's your score? 100. And I guess score is 100. I could play again, press space. My score this time is 200, I've done better. What an exciting game. So, 
Because it's easy to do, I'm going to make this press space bar to play a little bit more interesting. Instead of wait until key space pressed, I'm going to put in a loop there, which repeat until key space pressed. So at the moment that's basically doing the same thing, but inside here, and I should say this is nothing to do with the high score table, this is just because it's easy to make it look better. Inside here I'm going to have a set size and I'm going to have a point in direction. And the set size is going to be 100, which is full size, plus I'm going to have a multiply. 20 times something, and that something is going to be a sign. I do enjoy using signs and cosines to create nice effects in games. It's an easy function to use, and it varies between minus one and plus one in a nice curving manner. So 20 times sign will vary between minus 20 and plus 20. And the, in the sign, this will be how quickly it varies. I'm going to put times, I'm going to use a timer because the timer is constantly changing and I want it to happen at a reasonable speed so I'm going to times by 130. So if I take the point direction out for now you can see what this does. So now that gets bigger and smaller in a nice manner. This is the beauty of the sine wave. I'm going to add a point in direction to that. And it's going to be very similar, so I'm just going to duplicate that and add that in there, but the parameters will change slightly. Instead of 100, start at 90, which is the default way, so it's horizontal. Change the 20 to a 10, so it doesn't vary quite as much. And change the timer value to 80, just so it's not completely in sync. And now when I run the game, press spacebar to play, and that looks a lot more interesting for the sake of Two lines of code. So it doesn't change anything but it looks good. So now I've got my game written and it's and I get a score from the game we can move on to adding the high score table. So I'm going to use broadcast to communicate with a sprite which I'll create now with a paintbrush. I'm going to call the sprite high scores And I'm going to give it a, a costume which may not seem important, and it's just a dot. And the reason for that is because this high score sprite is going to be useful to be able to put that into the backpack and drag it into other games. But for some reason there is a bug in Scratch at the moment. If your sprite only contains an empty costume, you're not able to backpack it. So that's strange but true. So that's the reason it's got a, a dot as a costume. And I'm going to have a few broadcast receivers in here. Let's see, what should I have? I'll have a receive. Always good to have initialize, so I'll have an initialize high scores. And I'll have another one when I receive show high scores. And one that says High die scores. And back to my game sprite, I'm going to want to initialize the high scores at the beginning. So let's broadcast and wait right here to initialize the high scores. And then while I'm waiting for the spacebar, I'm going to show the high scores. So I'll put that in there. Show high scores. Wait for the space bar. When I'm in the game itself, I don't want to see the high scores. So just before the game starts, I will hide the high scores. So now let's go out and fill out these broadcast receivers. How many high scores are we going to have in our table? Well, let's make it so that it's easy to change. I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call it high score number. High score number. 
it's for this sprite only, and so it begins with a small letter. Okay. And I'm going to use this variable to say how many high scores are in my high score table. I'm going to have five. And I'm going to need a list to score to, to store my high scores. So let's make a list and we'll call it high scores. Seems good enough for this sprite only, so it's a small h. Okay. Now when I start the game, I I'm going to I'm going to fill the table with it could be zeros, it could be hundred, whatever you want the default high scores in the table to be. So I'm going to first of all make sure the table's empty. Delete all high scores that are currently in that list. Then I'm going to repeat high score number of times. So if high scores number is set to five, I'm going to repeat five times and I'm going to add values to the high score table. I'm going to set it so that it's quite good to have it not zero, so you have to work a little bit to get under the high score table. So let's have it at 100. So if I run my code now, it will populate my high score table with five high scores of 100. Let's make it look a bit better. Space it out. Oh, and I've got that dot there. I've explained why the dot's there, but I don't really want to see it. So it initialize high scores. I will also hide the sprite. So if I run that, there we go. I can see the high scores. I don't need to see the score variable, so I'll get rid of that. I can see the high scores. I'll press space to play. It doesn't hide the high scores because I haven't filled these in. What I should have here is when I receive hide high scores, I will hide the list of high scores. And when I receive show high scores, I will show it. And when I'm initializing the game, we'll make sure the high scores are hidden by broadcasting hide high scores. So let's run it again. Press spacebar to play. The high scores vanish. I've scored 400. Well done me. Doesn't add it to the table yet, but goes back and shows the table again. So now what we need is something to actually add a high score to the table. So back to game. Again, this is going to be a broadcast. So after you've played the game, I'm going to broadcast update high scores. And in the high score sprite, I'm going to have a receiver for update high scores. And what this is going to have to do is if I've scored 50, it's going to have to start at the top, say, is it better than that score? If it's not, it'll move down and so on to see if it's better than any of the scores. If it's not better than any of the scores, it'll just ignore it. But say I've scored 150, straight away it'll say, yes, I am bigger than 100. It should insert 150 as that score, moving all the other scores downwards. It doesn't want to replace a score because whoever had the top score before will now be in the second position and so on. And so let's do this. I need an index to step through the list. So I'm going to call that index. And it's going to start off at the top of the list, which is item number one. And I'm going to repeat for all the entries in the list, which we already know because we've set a variable for this. So in fact, not repeat, I'm going to do a yeah, repeat that one. There we go. Repeat. I'm going to get rid of my variable because that's just the default one that I never use. Okay, so I'm going to repeat high score number. And I'm going to say if my score, which from the game sprite I know I've stored it in the score for all variables, so I can for all, for all sprites, so I can look at that variable in high score. If my score is bigger than, start off with the first entry of a high score, so index is one. So if I'm bigger than the first entry, I want to insert my score here and move all the others down. So insert score 
stat index of high scores. And because I've inserted it, there's now six entries. There were five. I've inserted another score, so there's now six. So whoever had score number five is now pushed off the bottom of the high score table and I can delete them. So delete. And it's going to be off the bottom of the table. So that's high score number plus one. So the sixth high score in this case. And then I've finished. I've added my high score. I don't need to do anything else. I can simply stop this script. But if I haven't added my high score, let's check it against the next entry in the high score table. So change index by one. So it will check it against the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth. And that should take care of the high scores. Let's run the game. They're all set at 100. I've scored 170. And it's gone in as number one. Let's add a few more scores. I scored 290. And then I'll play it again. I've only scored 120 this time. Let's score 120 again. And it's actually added, it'll be the one slightly underneath. You don't, if you, if you score the same as a something already in there, we're only interested in it if we're larger than, and we weren't larger than entry three, so we were larger than entry four, so we've gone in there. And it's constantly moving the other scores down. So for instance, if I score 200, it's gonna move that 170 down. So I score 200, and it's moved the other scores down. So we have a fully functioning high score table. In the next tutorial, we'll show you how to add names to go with the high scores and we'll also show a much nicer way of displaying them on the screen than just displaying lists. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe to the Rock Coder channel so you'll know when the next part of this tutorial is released. And I'll see you again in the second part.